Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI365. In today's episode, I'm going to walk you through adding a GDAP relationship to a customer within your partner center environment. If you're not familiar with GDAP, I did a high level overview video last week, so you can check that out on my channel. This is something that's going to change the way you have your relationships with your downstream customers, though, so it's highly important that you start to educate yourself around these changes. In today's video, I'm going to be walking through establishing that new GDAP relationship and then go over some housekeeping items at the end as far as what this means when you have both a GDAP relationship and traditional delegated admin relationship within the customer tenant. So I'm here within Partner Center. I've gone under Customers and then Administer is where you'll see this granular administration section here. I have these couple of customers that I've established GDAP relationships with and that's why they're listed under here. Most likely if you're just getting started out, uh, this list will be empty and you'll only have the ability to request a new admin relationship. The admin relationship name here is something that has to be unique per customer and as you see here it is visible to the customers within their admin center as well too. What I would recommend is doing a certain naming convention you use for all customers where you might say customer name dash and then maybe MSA or maybe GDAP or something of that nature so that it's consistent in every customer environment. The big thing here again is that you cannot use or reuse a particular name you have in the past. So outside of this blur event, you're gonna get a not available if you've already used this within your partner center environment. So I could select one here and I can get the availability. The duration is set for the max of two years. Again, we touched on that in our previous video. Now we have time bound uh, links as well too for these relationships where you have to reevaluate, reaccept at least every two years. The reasons you might want to do this at a shorter term is particularly for contract work or temporary access that you might want to give to certain employees or, or part-time workers that might be coming into the organization. Next here, we're gonna select the roles in which we want to apply here. They have all these Azure AD roles, and I think this is where it might get a little bit more overwhelming just because we've never really interacted with this in the past, but this is where GDAP is powerful from the security perspective, because you ultimately get to decide the workloads that you're granting access to in this customer environment. So you could technically choose all and have them grant that, but that kind of defeats the purpose of GDAP, especially when you're encompassing a global administrator role as part of your workloads. So I'll do a separate video just kind of walking through some recommendations for these workloads, but this is basically everything that you want access to or need access to within the customer environment. And then as you'll see here in a minute, we'll be partitioning these roles across different security groups potentially if you want to stratify that across technicians entering these customer environments. So within here, I'm just going to say that we're gonna use the exchange administrator and I'm also gonna use the user administrator roles here. Just as an example, obviously you'd want to have more of these workloads added to the relationship and that should be established on the initial forefront just because you want to have them accept this link or do it on their behalf at least one time and then not have to do that access again. Um, so the cool part also is that there's new workloads that we can access delegated uh, speaking, meaning that we can access the security portal now uh, where we could not previously. So there's some new benefits to having GDAP relationships as well too. I'll go ahead and submit this and I'll finalize this request here which will pull up a new link. The key piece here is that this link is going to be custom per customer, meaning or per tenant, meaning that you can only use it once and it cannot be reused. You'd get an error if you try to reuse this again. And obviously you have a specific naming convention for the customer name here. So it's unlikely that you'd even want to do that regardless of the technical limitation. So let's pivot into the customer workflow and show how they accept this relationship. Okay, so I'm signed in here as an admin in this customer tenant. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this link in here which will load up my page for accepting this new relationship. If you've done the delegated admin relationships, lives in the same location here under partner relationships under the uh, settings section of the admin center. You have the ability here to approve these roles and it gives you the roles that you're approving here in the duration. You can say, yes, I wanna go ahead and grant this level of access here. And then it'll load this up and it takes just a minute before it will actually populate here. But if you refresh, 
it should roll up this line item here, which shows you the roles that you have access to, the time as far as the duration. This will be tracked. I'll get into that here where you can track this across customers just from the operational overhead there. But now we have this relationship established. So the key piece here is that that's not the end of our steps. We do have to assign it to a security group within Partner Center in order to complete the process. So let's pivot back over to Partner Center to finish that up. Okay, so I'm back in Partner Center here. I haven't really moved at all from copying this link. I'm gonna go ahead and select Done. And now you'll notice that this company name is listed and I can expand here and I can see the workloads here as far as administering services here. I think they're going to have to clean this up a little bit just because it's giving me links to all of the portals that I don't necessarily uh, immediately have access to, access to just yet uh, from this perspective. But if you go into the customer level here, you can see these admin relationships here. And I can see that I had two of them, uh, previous testing that I terminated here just for the purpose of this demo. But then I also have this GDAP relationship here where it shows me I have the exchange administrator role and user administrator role. I can then click into this GDAP relationship and this is where I get the ability to assign security groups uh, so that they have access. So it'll pull up a list of your security groups and by default you'll have the help desk agents and admin agents in here. You could then go and create other security groups within your Azure Active Directory environment that can be applied as far as if you want to partition out these roles uh, to different users within your organization or ba basically different groups. So we'll select the admin agents here and this is where you can select one or many of the roles that you selected. So if you're running a smaller organization it's possible that you'll just select all and everybody will have access to these workloads. But you could also have partitioned workloads as in I'm going to just assign the exchange administrator or I'm just going to assign the user administrator to this group. So I'll go ahead and click on save there and that will go ahead and go into a pending status and we can wait here for about 30 minutes and then this will take effect and grant me those, those rights as far as the user administrator rights into this tenant. So I'll go ahead and refresh my page here. Okay, so now I can see that this is in an active state and now I can go and start to test out some of the requests that I have here. So if I go under service management, I have my administer services here. I can go under 365. And you see here, I have this limited uh, view as far as the, the management. I'm in this, this tenant and then I can go under active users and I have the ability here to go ahead and add a user. And because I'm a user administrator, that's part of the security permissions that I granted myself. One key piece here is if I go under the Exchange Admin Center, I get this error message because I don't actually have access into this environment. And this obviously is a little bit messy right now. I think they'll clean this up here in the future, um, but this is just kind of that workflow from going into that, that particular section of which I do not have any rights um, as part of the security group that I just assigned. Again, the same would be true trying to access it here. Um, you end up getting this, this link and you know the description in it will eventually get you to the point where you're figuring out that you don't have the rights to access the tenant. Um, but this is just then restricting your, your overall ability there. I think the good feature request is to, to kind of eliminate the links in which you do not have access, um, but essentially there you're, you're gating access no matter what from the security side of the house. So that's the high level overview of just walking through creating and establishing these relationships and then partitioning it out to different security groups, which is all part of the operations that you would have to do across each customer environment here. Um, as far as some housekeeping items go, when you're testing this, just note that GDAP relationships take precedence over DAP relationships, meaning the legacy relationships that you have where you basically have access to everything. So be careful not to lock yourself out uh, when we talk about, this is uh, some more uh, partner center fun here, but uh, be sure to not lock yourself out when you talk about going in and uh, trying to test out GDAP workloads. We wanna scope those up just so you can still test things out but still have your remaining access. 
And then second to that, I think you're all probably thinking, man, it's going to take me a long time to do this across all of my customers. Um, well, Microsoft is touted or, or stated saying that they're going to try to publish a migration tool, at least for the initial move, so you can bulk migrate people from DAP relationships into GDAP in a more programmatic fashion, so you don't have to do all this extra work, at least for the initial conversion, which you will have to have that operational overhead for whenever you renew those relationships after the two-year expiration and things of that nature. So that's everything again that I wanted to showcase in this video. In my next video, I'll be walking through more of the recommendations around the roles and kind of giving some strategy around that when you talk about small organization versus a large organization and stratifying those workloads across security groups. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.